almost anything these days that runs on battery power, whether it's a smartphone, a cordless tool or an electric car, has some kind of battery charge indicator. Some way of telling you how much energy is left inside the battery. And sometimes it's a pretty low resolution reading, you know, it's just a couple of LEDs indicating the charge or a couple of bars on a screen like on this camera. Uh, and sometimes it's a very high resolution reading. So, for example, on your phone, it's a percentage. So the problem with trying to determine the state of charge of a battery of any kind is that you can't directly see it. You can't directly measure the state of charge of a battery. Well, there are some chemical ways of doing it for specific types of batteries, but most of the time there is no direct way of telling the state of charge and so you have to work out some clever method of doing it. So the first way you might think of is using the voltage of the battery. So any kind of battery has a certain voltage when it's empty and a certain voltage when it's full. So for instance a car battery is like about 10.5 volts when it's empty and about 12.7 when it's full. Um, a lithium-ion cell is about 3.5 volts when it's empty and about 4.2 volts when it's full. So what we could do is we can say, well, if we want to make a battery indicator, we can say that 3.5 volts means the battery is empty, so that's 0%, um, and 4.2 volts means the battery is full, so that's 100%. And then we just linearly map that, so that way... Um, 3.85 volts, which is exactly in the middle, would correspond to 50%, right? That would be a way of doing it, and that could work um, if you don't need a very high resolution or if you don't really care about this being very accurate. If you just need kind of a rough estimate, this could be a good method, but it has some problems. So first of all, the voltage of a battery isn't linearly proportional to the state of charge of that battery. If you have a bucket with straight walls and it gets drained at a constant rate, the water level in that bucket will go down at a constant rate, right? But if your bucket has weirdly shaped walls, so it gets thinner in some points and wider in, at other points, then the rate at which the water level de you know, lowers um, isn't the same all the time. It, it varies. Where the bucket is quite narrow, the water level will drop quite fast and where the bucket is wide it'll drop much much slower right? it's more like a vase actually than a bucket but you get the idea and this is kind of what batteries do as well so if you look at the the graph for state of charge actual state of charge versus voltage then what you'll find is that it's not a straight line but more of a, a curve that looks like this so if you're going to use voltage to determine the state of charge, you're going to have to take that into account and approximate that curve, which can be quite difficult because the curve might change a bit as the battery ages. But that's not the only problem with using the voltage. Another issue is how the voltage of a battery might change when you present a load to it or start charging the battery. Because if I present a load, I connect something to the battery that draws a lot of power, you know, let's say a powerful electric motor, for instance, and I switch that on, what's going to happen is the voltage on that battery drops a bit. As soon as I disconnect that motor again, what you'll see, you've probably experienced this yourself at some point, is that the voltage on that battery will go back up a little bit. It'll recover. So it was only a temporary dip in voltage and not a permanent one. And the same thing goes when you charge the battery. While you charge a battery, while the charger is connected, the voltage is a bit higher. And as soon as you disconnect the charger again, you can see it drops down a bit. And that's terrible, because if you use the voltage to display the state of charge, you're going to see that percentage go down when you connect a load to it. And when you disconnect the load again, it's going to go back up. And it seems like the battery has recharged itself, which doesn't make sense. So now let's take a look at a, a very different approach. And so uh, in this approach, instead of measuring the voltage of our battery, what we can also do is we can measure the electric current that goes into our battery or goes out of our battery. So kind of like if you had that bucket again. Let's say that on the, on the pipe that you use to pump water into it or suck water out of it, you put a, a measuring device that measures the flow of the water. Right? That's like measuring the current. And so what you can do with this is you can work out how much water goes into it 
or out of it. So you can't see how much water is in the bucket. You, you still can't see that, right? You can't directly see how much charge is in the battery. But you can work out how much charge you're putting into it or pulling out of it. Right? So at, at the start point, you know that it's full or you know that it's empty. That would work as well. But at the start point, you know the state of charge. And then, based on how much goes in and how much goes out, you, you work out what the state of charge or you know, how full the bucket is. So you can do that with electric current. You can monitor the current that goes into the battery or goes out of the battery, and then you work out how much charge is in there. Now, this system actually works really well. It can give you very accurate reading on the state of charge of the battery, much better than you could by just measuring the voltage of the battery. But this does have a big problem, and that is that a small error, a small error in your measurement of the electric current can over time start adding up and become much, much bigger. So this system is quite accurate the first time you use it, but after a hundred cycles, you know, after a hundred charge discharge cycles, it becomes rather inaccurate. So the way we can overcome this problem is by combining this current measuring technique with the voltage measuring technique from before. So what we can do, for instance, is we can say, well, every time the voltage reaches 4.2 volts, we consider the battery to be fully charged. There is not much debate about that. And then what we can do is we can recalibrate our current counter, our charge counter. So we set that to 100% because we know it's fully charged. So that way, every time the battery gets fully charged, we recalibrate that current counter. So even if there is a little bit of error, you know, let's say it's not quite at 100%, but it's at, you know, 99.4% or whatever, we come in, we say, okay, well, you know, great that you're at 99.4, but that's actually wrong. It should be 100. So we now reset it to 100. And so you can still have a tiny bit of error during one charge discharge cycle, but that error gets eliminated every time the battery gets fully charged. So it doesn't get the chance to build up over time and become a problem. We can make this even better if we also reset it when the battery is empty. So we can also say, well, when the voltage is at 3.5, um, now we're going to also reset the counter to zero, for instance. If you know even more points, if you know for sure that 3.67 corresponds to exactly 24.6% for some reason, you can also calibrate your counter at that point. So you can combine the voltage technique and the current technique to get a more accurate result. So there you go. Those are some, some methods that you can use to determine the state of charge of a battery. Uh, and as you've probably noticed, it's much harder than you think. There is quite a bit more to it than you might have expected. So the next time you look at that percentage on the screen of your phone, or even on the <laughs> on the two bars on the screen of your camera, uh, maybe appreciated a bit more. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.